Hi, I'm Larry with Geringer Gasifiers. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Liberator Gasifier. That's what this kind of big black box looking thing is right here. And it's not the prettiest thing, but what it does is pretty amazing. It takes, it takes wood, like you see in this bucket here. If you look in here, there's some tree limbs I've cut up some milling pieces here and you can take this wood and you open the lid of the liberator and you put your wood inside of it and then you take you take this wood and you're going to ignite it to this port down here and the way we ignite this that works best for me anyways is I use a MAPE gas torch. So I turn the MAPE gas torch on and then I light it through here. But I'm not going to light it right now because I want to tell you a little bit more about how this process works. See the wood stored up in here in this hopper area and then it's thermally broken down in this center area. We'll just call this the reactor section. And then the ash and the waste, the biochar, ends up in this lower part here. Well, as it's thermally decomposed, oxygen is pulled in to this combustion area. And during that process, there is some very interesting things that happen. The gas is broken into several parts where you get hydrogen and carbon monoxide and some minute nitrogen. And then what we can do is we can actually pull those gases off in this stage here and pull it into our trade secreted filtering system, which actually follows some really interesting NASA designs and uses all natural filters that can be just washed out in any household sink. Well then that gas is pulled into a cooling area. So we have to cool the gas down because when the gas exits essentially our reactor zone at 1100 degrees Celsius it's superheated. So it exits at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So then the gas gets pulled down through these pipes and up these ones and it cools off and condenses. Then we're, we pull the gas down into our generator here. This is a 7,000 watt Troy built generator. The only modifications that we've made to this generator is to the, to the air filter housing. We've added a uh, inch and a half nipple to the air breather housing, which allows us to pipe the gas directly in to the carburetor. The fuel line is totally turned off. In fact, there's no fuel even in this generator. The only other thing that is needed is this premix valve. Because you need oxygen for combustion, we have to let some ambient air be pulled into our mixture with this just this ball valve. Once you set this ball valve, you can pretty much forget about it because the carburetor will control the rest of the mix in the generator. And today on this video, we're going to run this chop saw here. And we're going to cut up not just some small material, but this big 4x4 block just to demonstrate the fact that this generator is definitely making power. Now to start this process off, we use a blower. There's a blower inside this housing and it's plugged into 110 volts. Now you can always run this off of an inverter off of batteries. So then you would just provide the power to it from batteries versus 110 volts. Today we're going to use 110 volt power. And there's several rheostat controls over here. One of the rheostat controls controls the blower motor, the speed, and the amount. 
the other control controls your ash grate because we can't have the gas get clogged up in the ash grate. So we have an ash grate actuator here that actually moves the grate around very slowly, maybe one or two revolutions per minute. And it's not always needed. But when it is needed, it's just an easy feature. You just turn it on and the ash grate spins around. You can kind of hear the hum of the ash grate motor right now. So like I said, this is the Geringer gasifier. 